Ahlan wasahla na warabaha mpenzi mtazamaji wa kipindi cha Walk with Sagini. Ijumaa nyingine hapa Mubashara ndana kipindi hiki cha Walk with Sagini kwenye Facebook na kwenye YouTube Live ikiwa ni Ijumaa ya tarehe 25 mwezi Juni mwaka 2021. Mwezi ujao basi tunakuwa tunaelekea nchini Japan katika jiji la Tokyo kwa manufaa kwa minaji ile rasmi ya manufaa ama ndio zile ma mashindano yale ya Olimpiki kule jijini Tokyo nchini Japan. Kwa hiyo basi na magwijo wili ambao wanapenda kuwakilisha taifa katika mbio za mita moja na zungumzia Ferdinand Omanyala Omurwa mtoto kutoka kule maeneo ya magharibi mwa Kenya alafu pia na mtoto kutoka kule maeneo ya Nyanza Doluo na mzungumzia Mark Otieno Odiambo ambaye wote wawili walifuzu kuelekea Olimpiki ya mwaka huu mashamba yalikuwa yanaliwa mwaka nyana lakini kutokana na virusi vya corona basi yalikuwa yanaliwa mwaka huu nchini Tokyo Japan juzi tu kijana wamefanya mambo makubwa katika uga wa kasarani kuweza kufuzu haswa watu wawili manake mmoja aliweza kuvunja rekodi ya kitaifa ile kwenda shikiliwa na mwenzake papa hapa lakini kabla ya kwenda mbali basi ni vizuri tuweze kuangalia basi walifanyani wa hawa wawili kabla ya kuanza rasmi kipindi cha walk with sagini ikiwa ni juma ya tarehe 25 mimi naitwa Jason Sagini askofu mkuu wa michezo ulimwenguni siende mbali so it really helps when there's no Yeah, there you go. There you go. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a race. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh that's real power. That's real power. That's uh What a race between Ferdinand Omanyala. You can see them in competition but also brothers in arms. Those are the two fastest Kenyans right now in the 100 meters. That being Ferdinand Omanyala and Mark Otieno Odiambo. That race won in 10.03 well within the 10.05 that Paul had earlier mentioned. <laughs> Alright uh, walifanya vile vile katika uga wa Kasarani na muona anapiga tabasamu kubwa <laughs> na kwa karibu sana Ferdinand Omanyala Omurwa alafu chini yake amekaa Marco Tieno Odiambo wote kifuzu katika mashindano yale ya kuelekea Olimpiki e, mwezi ujao hadi mwezi Agosti kule jijini Tokyo nchini Japan kwanza kabisa how does it feel Ferdinand Omanyala qualifying for the olympics for the first time ever it's happening it feels it feels so great because uh, it's been a dream for me actually it's a dream for every kid out here to be an olympian mm -hmm. so it's it's a very great feeling to qualify for the olympic games and to go out there and compete with the big boys mm. right umemwona hapo marco tieno tukiangazia kanda hiyo fanda na mpiga tabasamu kubwa Maybe can you just uh, niambie tu kwa mtazamo wako labda ama hisia zako ni zipi baada ya kuangalia kanda ile kwa mara nyingine tena? Uh, sorry. It, uh, oh. uh, it, it, it uh, unatiki mi nikiwatch your race bado nikiwatch your race na kuanga na goosebumps because ilikuwa na pressure mob sana it had a lot of pressure so many false starts. But mm -hmm. if I still watch that race I feel like I'm still running. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it was it was a very it was a very entertaining moment for everybody who was at the field at, on that day and a very fulfilling moment for me as an, an as an athlete so every time i watch that race i just laugh and say god thank you labda kwako mako tieno what's your reaction mm -hmm. to that um i'll say that it's a it's a dream come true and it's a you know godful um open that door cuz i was looking forward to qualify for the olympics and it was such a great honor to you know run with ferdinand and to be honest it's the truth as in pia mimi nikiangalia race as in all the time back at us as if when you may show i'm like hey we were so fast as in atujai kimbevo see how it is so it was really a fast race and he's the reason that you know mm -hmm. that we both qualified as well All right. No, you are the reason. <laughs> All right. Uh, asante sana. Tudeni kidogo, tudeni kidogo. 
Asante uh, sana basi kwa hilo magwiji hawa ni Fanda no Manyala upande wa juu alafu mekati yake mkoa kula Marco Tiano. Tayari kwanza kusema nasi mm. basi na safari yao katika mbio za riadha ilianza hapo maana yake mmoja alikuwa mwana michezo wa kandanda mwingine alikuwa mchezaji wa raga kwa hiyo atakuwa akueleza kwa kinanga ubaga walianzi wapi ni sasa hivi na je siku za usoni wanaelekea wapi na je matarajio yao yetu ni yepi kama mashabiki kutoka kwao kama wana riadha ambao wanasifika mimi nawaita the flash yani wale wenye kasi zaidi huko nchini labda mtazamaji kabla na swali yote ile basi nitumie kwenye mtandao wa twitter at @jason_ sagini at @joroge_2 hashtag inakuwa ni walk with sagini alafu pia unatumia kauli yako kupitia mtandao wa facebook comment section hapa chini niambie una isi vipi unasikiliza mtazamo kiwa wapi na pia ye swali lako ni lipi kwa wageni wangu wa leo ambao ni Marco Tieno na Ferdinand O Manyala. Mwelekezo wangu upande wa pili ni Dennis Njoroge atakuwa anafanya kweli. Nianze rasmi kuweza kuangazia basi labda kwa ku, kwa kufanya tu intro fupi. Nianze na Marco Tieno. Maybe kwa mtu ambaye hajui Marco Tieno Odhiambo ni nani. Hebu mueleze kwa sekunde 30. Who is Marco Tieno? Marco Tieno ni born again Christian, he's a husband and also an athlete. Mhm. Amezaliwa wapi? Oh. <laughs> um, nimezaliwa Kajiado na naishi Nairobi. All right. Uh, Fernando Manyala upande ni wako kwa sasa labda tuambie who is Fernando Manyala Umurwa? Amen, amen. Fernando Manyala is a student uh, at University of Nairobi, who is also a sprinter, who also is a dad to a young a young Quinton Finn, who is also Uh, not married but soon to be married <laughs> uh-huh. and a young boy who, who comes from Kitale carrying a big dream in a small heart uh-huh. all right asante sana kwa hilo eh, kabla ya kugusia makuja katika masuala yale ya raga na soka ningependa kugusia hili maana yake unajua katika mbio zile ambazo nimeonyesha kwenye kanda hiyo eh, Marco Tieno there's something i want to show you here before he goes too far I might not have it but then I think this is in the past. This is in the past, eh? This is in the past. Eh? This is oh. I think during the <laughs> <laughs> This when when was this? Um that was in second May. Uh-huh. A uh, 20th May, sorry. Not uh-huh. 20th May. Uh-huh. Yeah. What was happening? Um actually that's that's the only spell spike that I had. Yeah. Yeah, spike yenye nimekuwa nikitumia and <laughs> sikuwa na ingine and so the more na tumio spike the more liko na raruka hata si unaweza angalia tu hapo eh hey. eh hey. Alright asante sana. Labda katika zile mbia ambazo umeshiriki hivi majuzi za kuweza kufuzu kuelekea olimpiki eh ulishiriki mm. kwa kutumia viatu vya viatu vya kuseme kuomba ama viatu vya kuwazima. Eh labda tuambie hey. kiini chake ni nini? ki ki ni chake nini yani what, what was the reason <laughs> oh kisa 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 ile chenga kidogo <laughs> yeah so um the reason is that kusema kweli siko na kiatu at that moment and um hata nikifanya practice nilikuwa na hata eh, unaona kiatu ya white nilikuwa na kiatu kingine ya blue so mm. nili switch soul so the white soul went to the blue shoe mm-hmm. so you know nilikuwa na nime taraja ndatumia e trials na kwenda nao mbele so spike tukipata si upata spike sa zile tuna make team ya kwenda ku represent Kenya so hiyo ndio ile wakati yenye su tegemea kupata spike but hiyo siku Samaria Mwema um, alitokea kijana anaitwa Tasis so alikuja alikuwa, alikuwa tunafanya training the day before the big event and um, apo ndio wife akaenda kamongelesha akamwambia eh kama kwa na spike nyingine kama anaweza tusaidia at least tutumie turudishe and yeah hivyo ndio ikafanyika <laughs> all right asante sana let me send out some shout outs before going too far i can see even say uh, juma anasema kwamba omu beast asante sana kwa hilo siril siril oj mateo anasema vijana wajana i wish we had a team for relays you always have a good chance with relay we wish you well guys we have a team by the way that went to bahamas and won silver medal so team iko eh, siri lodge mateo kwamba haipo na kuona manu manu news tunangoja bana hili hiki ni kipindi cha riadha 
Itasubiri kipindi cha soka. Asante <laughs> <laughs> sana kwa hilo. Na kuona Andrew Ogeto anasema kwamba mimi kama fan manze asante sana pia kwa hilo Diana Immaculate all the way from Tasia kama sijakosea anasema haha na shukrani sana kwa hilo. Safi, mimi katika swala hili labda you know the game is so popular in Kenya, the game of athletics is so popular in Kenya and Kenya is well known uh, from uh, athletics and rugby more of uh, football and other games. But in athletics we are number one in the world and we are very renowned in the world. Now but in terms of sprints and in terms of uh, short distance uh, races we are not so well known maybe can you describe the popularity of sprinting in Kenya Ferdinand Manyana so previously uh, sprint has not been so good i must say uh, in Kenya but it's been it's been changed it's been changing over the years and i thank god for this year because it has it has really changed a lot because now you can see the attention the attention has shifted now to the short sprints because now we are we are posting faster times and i pray and i hope that in the next 5 years will be somewhere on the sprints map okay. all right labda nije kwako mako tiro niambie amesema kwamba he hope that in future we will be somewhere in the sprints map Maybe Marco Tieno, you as an athlete, where you come on Ariadha, what do you think should be done to make sure that we in the future or in the short time to come will be at a higher level compared to long distance races in the sprints? What should be done? Uh mean as I I think we should repeat what has been done, especially in Mwaka, bringing more races, especially SAK Mekwaiki to Saidia Sana Mekwakeka uh Michezo Yariada katika kwenye stadium ama kasarani so tunataka hizi mchezo zikuwe nyingi sana and to get more invitation kwenda ku represent also the country as individual other country kama yenye nilienda hii mwaka nilianza na Zambia hapo nilikimbia personal best so nilikimbia naweza sema nilikimbia 100 kama 10 before nifike before nifike trial so those were good race sharpness and um, at least for us to be known and for us to perform well we need more races especially this year and we need uh, more visibility in terms of media wise and also support from to have sponsorship support from for, for guys as well mm-hmm. all right sana sana kwa hilo labda kwa mtu ambaye hajui hawa nani by the way this is fun no manyala on my on my is it right or left left and then on my bottom here anaka Mark Otieno by the way these two were qualified for Alifuzu kuelekea Tokyo Japan baada ya kuweka rekodi ambayo inaweza kufikia muda ambao unahitajika na Olimpiki kamati ya Olimpiki maana yake Fana no Manyala kama unaona kwenye kiwango chako mtazamaji aliweka dakika ama sekunde kumi nukta sufuri mbili na ya Mark Otieno Odhiambo akiweka muda wa sekunde kumi nukta sufuri tano katika ugo kasarani katika zile mbio tu za kuweza kuteua kikosi kitakachowakilisha taifa la Kenya katika mbio za ama katika mashindano ya Olimpiki ifikapo Julai mwezi ujao kule nchini ama kule jijini Tokyo Japan maana kiota wawili walifuzu kuelekea kule kwa hiyo itakuwa ni rasmi kwa mara ya kwanza kabisa katika historia ya Olimpiki wanariadha kutoka Kenya kuwakilisha ama kukimbia ama kushiriki katika mbio za mita ya moja wanaitwa the flashes asante sana kwa hilo nije katika swala hilo hilo bado la mbio za masafa marefu na masafa na masafa fupi ukiangalia katika historia za mbio tu kuna historia nzuri sana katika mbio za masafa marefu tunazungumzia mita 5000 mita 1000 mita 1500 urukaji viunzi na maji lakini katika mbio fupi hatuna historia nzuri sana labda wewe kama mwanariadha Ferdinand Omanyala Omurwa as an athlete who has qualified to the Tokyo Olympics come next month what is your plan to change that notion that Kenya doesn't do well in the short races uh, my plan is to run to break records hopefully three times in the heats and the semis and the finals okay. so actually what we have done so far has really changed a lot as far as sprints is concerned in Kenya because now it's brought a lot of attention to the sprints and so many people are now talking about 100 meters in Kenya 100 meters at the Olympics in, from Kenya so so far so good so we're just planning and uh, training towards the Olympic games and i pray that everything turns out well all right sana sana kwa hilo eh labda kwako Marco Tieno what do you think 
Can be done apart from the athlete side. Now let's come to the team and the management. What should the management do mm. to make sure that uh, your achievements and your goals are in a secure from the bona far? Um, actually, I can say sprints are very expensive, so it just really need in acquire mtu tena yako na ile pesa kuanzia so for you to reach at that kind of level you need heavy support support from either the government support from either the corporates ndio kusaidia ndio kuwezesha kufika penye either penye tumefika and beyond all right labda kuna mtu ambaye anauliza hapa kupitia mtandao whatsapp Walter Mukaya anaweza kwamba for one to become a sprinter what do i need to do Ferdinand you can answer that First things first, you have to to have a big heart and to have a very strong mental stability to survive through the challenges that come with sprints. And then the next thing is to go and train. In sprints you just always am katoa asubuhi because unasema ni short distance useme mimi tatu nitandike nikimbie 10-0 ama 10-1. Lazima uko ready kujitolea. You must come out here ready to invest na ku train because it ina ina take a lot from you mentally, physically spiritually so it all, it starts with your mind heart and then physical part will follow so kara ataka kuanza kukimbia akuwe ready for all those and then training sasa training yanzi bila shaka ni pumbe yeah. jumbe za mashabiki upande wa pili na muona uh, Steve Mutuk Muluka of Yamba <laughs> so, by the way hawa ni akina nani <laughs> this is your brother. Is this your brother, Mark? Uh, oh, that's my wife. <laughs> oh, this is your wife, Steph Muluka. Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity. I didn't know. Oh, Steph, I didn't know what's happening. Samahani. Samahani. Edwin, Edwin, David Texeira. Good evening, Jason Sagini. Good evening to you. Sana sana kwa hilo na kuona Manucho Sikuku nasema kwamba big up brothers eh, Kenya celebrates you champion sana sana kwa hilo pia By the way thank you very much Steph Muluka for tuning in because uh, in some part of the show you will be involved also so just stay tuned there Now nije katika swala hili la eh, how did you join the game yani ilikuwaje paka ukajipata katika mchezo wa riadha nianze na Marco Tieno because I understand wewe kabla ya kujiunga na mchezo wa riadha ulikuwa mchezaji wa soka nambari saba wa kusifika nambari mbili wa kusifika yani <laughs> eh, wa kupanda na kushuka hebu <laughs> niambie baba your, your brief background in football back then when you were playing for Hilton uh, Hilton club Hilton, Hilton high school no i am um, hostel high school yes yes <laughs> yeah so yeah so nilikuwa nafanya both athletics na football but my passion was more in athletics so yeah. You know football nikiwa primary I kwa that interesting because I didn't know how to play nilikuwa tu kupiga na kukimbia that was the only <laughs> job that tulikuwa tu tunafanya tu is just to kick and to sprint so there was a time my dad told me that football in require a lot of the mind so I was like acha acha ni try high school ndio ndivyo nitaka so nikifika high school um at least hapo mind yangu ilikuwa in expand so in terms of sprints and um football at the same time so nilikuwa at least naona improvement on both sides but mm-hmm. hati yangu bado still ilikuwa more of sprints because nika realize football in at require a whole team mm-hmm. kwa selected ama for you to go and there are many of us to kwanga ile dream tutaka kwenda kuchezea either club kama Manchester and all hizo vitu zote so kitu lini discourage sana ninakumbuka nikiwa high school primary kuliko ngana au so alikuwa anaitwa Aspire Africa so walikuwa nakuja mimi nilikuwa nilisomea shule ya Ocha for two years by the way so kuna so alikam wa ku select watu so the thing is walikuwa na select a whole to go to kama 100 but they just need one guy na no, umse mmoja akiselectiwa na kuja Nairobi <laughs> na akikuja Nairobi pia anapata wengine wabaya na then again hapo wanataka tena mtu mmoja ndio ndio acheze timu ndogo ya Barcelona <laughs> eh so tulikuwa tunaona ai ina kwa kitu ngumu sana so niko ah, natoa chatu ni change into sprints <laughs> mm-hmm. hope vitu kama hizo zitanipata nikiwa high school juice na discourage mtu even more you, you never know ume give your all on kwa wing ama ume give your all kwa defense but the person who's noticing aoni mwenye anataka mm-hmm. kunotice watu always ya wana so ah, nikasemacha nichukue sprints juni career like sprints is just an individual event and still passion yangu ilikuwa for it and nikagof nikaiendea 
Alright, sasa na kwa hilo. Nije kwake Ferdinand Manya alama yake Ferdinand wewe ulikuwa mchezaji wa raga. Yaani wewe kama ungalikuwa bado katika uga wa raga sasa hivi ungalikuwa unakukuzia viwango vyake akina Humphrey Kayange eh mwenda zake eh kocha ambaye aliweza kuaga hivi majuzi tu. Labda uweze kuniambia a brief background and history in your rugby career life. So uh, I started playing rugby in high school in at form 3. I joined rugby after trying so many other games hockey basketball uh, but hapo nika sikuwa na option huko so I joined rugby at in form 3 and in form 4 I joined the main team I was so active at the wing because ni mbio yangu pia ilianza hapo so after after high school I joined university of nairobi main machine but hapo tena kenya cup kidogo ilikuwa ngumu because kugonga na ilikuwa hapo ni noma so, nikaona hapo siwezi make so I decided now to go to a lower club level at championship level where i found someone who said i'm too fast for people at the wing so he advised me to join athletics so i googled and found the calendar of events for the athletic season and then i started the journey but the most pro- most important thing that dri- dri- that drove me to join athletics is i wanted to just come to athletics and run for like six months because niliona athletics has money so only kwa ataka tu ni kuje for 6 months ni kimbie niende nikimbie kimbie alafu <laughs> nipate pesa ninunue gari ya kunipeleka training ya rugby <laughs> right. but, then, but then i joined in and then i loved i really loved the sport cuz it's not all about sprinting it's not all about training it comes down to discipline your values and i just fell in love with sprinting mm-hmm. Okay, asante sana kwa hilo. Labda kuna picha ambayo nikitaka kuonyesha hapa by the way eh, Mr. Ferdinand, if you are not a sprinter. If you are not a sprinter and if if you are not a sprinter right now since you left rugby, maybe mbona ukuchagua kuwa boxer? Ah. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Django. I really I, but then I still I still love in my next life I'll be a boxer because I I really love boxing. I'm a big <laughs> fan to the <laughs> I'm a big fan to the heavyweight champion Anthony Joshua of the UK. Is alikuwa fight na Tyson Fury but Tyson Fury aka akakuwa hijacked na Wilder. I'm a big fan of boxing. Na nilijua by the sign kiamo kwenda boxing pia haitakuwa noma hakuna kiwezeka. <laughs> All right. Kwa hiyo mtazamaji kwa hiyo mtazamaji kama hangekuwa mchezaji wa raga na kama hangekuwa mkimbiaji katika mbio za mita moja labda angalikuwa sasa hivi anafukuzia viwango vya kina Kamaro Usman kutoka taifa la Nigeria manake huyu ni bingwa wa kitengo kile cha heavyweight katika mashindano yale ya UFC kule Marekani. Sasa labda ndio kuniambia Marco Tieno you are transition from football in high school in to athletics how did you transit from football into athletics what was the bridging point um the bridging point ilikuwa especially after high um form nikiwa form 4 so nilikaa tu chini nikajiambia eh nini nataka kufanya after form 4 cause sijaenda university bado but still god alinipa a job that's a miracle and um nilikaa tu chini nikamwambia to god me nataka kufanya athletics that's the only talent in your why so this is the only thing that na juanda prosper so i'd love to do it and you know and give glory back to you so see what the lord has done when uko have by the way ni kwa neema mwenyezi Mungu Maulana aliyejumbi nguni kwamba kwa leo uko hapa unakimbia katika mbio zile za mita 100 na ndio maana basi yeah. askofu mkuu amechezwa ni mwinguni anakuhoji mubashara na kupitia facebook live na youtube live kwa hiyo mtazamaji kama una kauli yote ile kama una swali basi usite kunitumia ndani ya mtandao wa Facebook comment section niambie una swali lipi kwa wageni wangu Fernando Manyala pamoja na Marco Tino au pia kwenye mtandao wa Twitter unipata at Jason underscore Sagini at Njoroge underscore Dennis2 hashtag inakuwa ni walk with Sagini labda nije kwako Mr. Mark uweze kuniambia manake najua kwamba eh, kwa fikia sasa hivi una coach ambaye anakukufunzi kwa jina la Andrew Cook huyu ni ako kule maeneo Afrika Kusini. Sasa cha kustajabisha ni kwamba hamjai kukutana. How do you work with a coach and you've never seen him? You know I didn't believe it when you were tell, telling me that. <laughs> it's um the thing is it's all about discipline. 
because i remember he reached out in ig so tulianza tu kuongea hapo hivyo once in a while and to be honest mate it, it was just a god thing because i can't explain how tulivenye tulipatana na tukaza kuongea and all kinds of that cause he told me that hey i just feel like i need to work with you and me like well like i also feel the same thing cause there's a coach that i've been looking for and there's something that i'm looking inside a coach na siko na find but god i think ali bring him say and it was such a blessing so tukaanza ku work na every time to keep training before ni anze of season so tulika tu chini tuka discuss kenya ta hold for the season na it so since hata kuwa hapo the discipline part the big part ta kwa kwangu like we just have to train hard we just have to train smart at the same time because he's not there ata kwa natuma program so now it's up to us both me and my wife to you know get for the program and tunashinda tumesimamiana tunasaidiana so i can say ta imekuwa discipline because even the past three years sijakuwa ni kitu na visibility of a coach and it wasn't something new but this is something different because um the previous coach nili and at least kwake nikaka kwake for about two months nikarudi but nikaendelea he still wasn't there but for this one i haven't met him face to face so we got to chat whatsapp and um aki call and akol pia via whatsapp tuna catch up tuna get to know how are things and all kinds of stuff so tunaona it's an honor by the banake kufanya kazi na mwalimu ambaye kidogo hayuko karibu nawe kama mtoto wa Afrika kama mtoto wa Afrika bila mwalimu darasani mtoto aweza kasoma atafika kidogo lakini katika ndio hizi za riadha inafaa basi uwe na nidhamu ya hali ya juu asilimia mia moja mtazamaji jiulize ngali kweli wewe ungelikuwa na nidhamu hiyo asilimia mia moja manake Marco Tieno ana asilimia hiyo mia moja na zaidi e, nije kwako Ferdinand Omanya anaoniambia labda katika maisha yako ya ukufu ya, ya, ya ukimbiaji maana kile ndio kwamba pia una coach ndio labda atuambie historia yako na coach yako iko vipi maana coach yako anafahamu kama ndiye huyu kama sijakosea eh coach ya historia yako iko vipi na coach ya huyu na je kufikia sasa hivi umejituma ama umejifunza nini kwa wako wake uh, nimekuwa na coach since ni azembio uh, alinipata ni kuna kuna interview fulani alikuwa anasema alinipata nikaa mikono zangu zinaenda left right and center <laughs> but amekuwa part of my journey like the whole process is been part of it ame ni train since ni, ni, nilikuwa na tulikuwa tunafanya ni drills like naita drills kwa athletics nilikuwa nazifanya vibaya sana but ame ni chonga hadi pale niko nilikuwa na kimbia 11 seconds 100 meters but ame ni let hadi na kimbia 10 so is more like a coach to me is more like a dad a father to me because we don't just interact on track we interact even out of track because unaweza kuwa na shida sometimes financial ana come through ana ni help alafu kukiwa na ma birthday parties za watu hii bado ni sisi tuna invitiana so it's not like a relationship that's based on track to yake it's a relationship that's all around so unaweza sema is like is is more like a coach to me asante sana kwa hilo basi muona coach wake huyo eh bwana pana lomanya la pale na kocha wake Marco Tieno umeonyesha hapo hewani mtazamaji kwa hiyo ni makocha ambao wanafanya kazi ya juu zaidi maana yake bila wao hao wangalikuwa katika nafasi ambayo kwa sasa hivi Marco Tieno na Ferdinand Omanyala ni some jumbe kabla ya kuchukua pumziko fupi la kupiga maji tama na kuona huyu ni Elvis Wafula sema kwamba askofu usagini kazi safi kwa gwiji hawa watu watuweke sawa kuhusiana safari yao ya riadha sana sana kwa hilo na kuona pia Manchester boy Fabiano sema kama kaka sagini nimerudi kwa show nitambue hewani nimekutambua na kuona pia Edwin David Texeiro sema kwamba apart from athletics Mark and Fadi ni, na, ni mashabiki wa michezo ipo watajibu hilo baadaye kidogo shikilia tu hapo hapo na kuona pia Elvis Wafula sema kwamba papa Wafula niko ndani kongole sana kwa magwiji wote eh Fadi Nandomanya na Marco Tieno kila laheri wakiperusha bendera ya taifa katika mashindano ya Olimpiki mwezi ujao e, na kuona pia sehe, wako wengi tu hapa na kuona Andrew Andrew Ogeto anasema kwamba man you news eh hey, baba tunakuja <laughs> <laughs> Ah. <laughs> Itakuja tu baba tulia shikilia hapo Andro Ogeto. Alright sasa kusiana basi na hilo basi niruhusu nichukue pumziko fupi la maji kabla ya kurejea kwenye kipindi cha leo niweze kuzungumzia basi safari yao katika masuala ya nidhamu, masuala 
ya malipo masuala pia ya kupata jeraha masuala pia ya maandalizi kabla ya mchezo hiki ni kipindi cha Okwitsa Gini mtazamaji usiende mbali maana hapa tunakoleza kwa rangi nyeusi <tos> <laughs> eh, yeah. hiyo ilikuwa kwenye pre-trials. Ilikuwa kwenye pre-trials hiyo by the way. Eh, na bado ulishinda Fernando Manyala na baada ya kushinda ndio za hivi majuzi tu eh, ukaamkia kwa kitu fulani hapo. Mwelekezi wangu Redis Njoroge nipe kitu hicho. Eh, sante sana kwa hilo. Haya. Fernando Manyala inakuaje baba? Kwani kuna Hapa <laughs> hapa wajawali kwa wajaribu tu kuchokoza tuoni but I think ni Photoshop. <laughs> Hii ni Photoshop. Sasa ni kitu ina ile kwa real. All right. All right. Sasa ina furaha sana maana yake baada ya kushinda mbio zile za mita 100, eh wali mashabiki zote hawakosi cheche, waliamka asubuhi na kufanya mambo yao kufanya majambo kupitia mtandao ya kijamii. Sasa niingie katika mwaka 2018. Mwaka 2018 Fernando Manyala ulikuwa na jeraha la mgongo na niliathiri sana e eh, kariya yako kwa ujumla maana yake ulikosa mwaka mzima ulikuwa nje labda niambie kwa undani zaidi jeraha lile liliathiri vipi e eh, kariya yako ya riadha uh, nilipata back problem because of the gym nilikuwa gym nikifanya some workouts and then back ka snap my bones zika intertwine hapo zikafinya my nerves so i was out for so long and ilini affect sana because it's one of the dark moments that i had in my career but we always say that like when life gives you blows you wake up stronger than you are mm. so nili come back stronger and now i'm here mm. all right asante sana kwa hilo labda uniambie labda katika mchezo ama katika ndio zile za mita 100 what are some of the injuries that an athlete is prone to So uh, most most uh, injuries come ni hamstring injuries because una find out that the hamstring are the biggest muscles that are used sana kwa sprints. So unakuja maybe uja warm vizuri ama uko shape ile shape yako ya maisha shape of your life. Unakuja una sprint hivi kidogo nasikia eh hey, hamstring imesema bana unanikimbiza tulia inatokana. So most of the injuries nimesikia ni hamstring injuries but there also other injuries because unaweza pata msame tear quad quad ni e hapa opposite i mean hapa mbele kwa mguu quad hapo ndo quad sometimes napata ni calf 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 in a pull most of the big muscles are the ones that do get injuries uh, the mo, uh, sometimes pia minor minor muscles unapata ndani ya thighs inaitwa adductors unapata pia hizo pia ziko na issues so it, it's a sport that is full of injuries but you wake up every day ukiambia god mazele ni chunge you never know when it comes All right, uh, asante sana kwa hilo. Nikiangalia hapa katika miaka ambayo ulifanya mazoezi mako tieno, miaka kama tatu ulifanya mazoezi peke yako, yani kwa kujifunza tu peke yako kabla ya kuanza ama kuelekea kule nchini Poland mapema mwaka huu kwa minaji ya mashindano yale ya World Relays maana yake mlitoa pale medali ya fedha. Uniambie labda miaka hiyo tatu ambayo ulikuwa unashiriki ama ulikuwa unafanya mazoezi peke yako kibinafsi ili kuaje? Na je, uli achieve nini wakati huo? Um ni sema ilikuwa ngumu ilikuwa difficult but at the same time it brought discipline and um cause pia sometimes always it and peke yako kitend peke yako bana ni uchungu so at least wife wangu alikuwa kando back, back then alikuwa girlfriend so <laughs> sikuwa na boyeka sana so zingine either kama ako committed somewhere else so ikilipata kani kwa training peke yangu kwa sikuwa na miss but ilikuwa uchungu <laughs> so it was a bit challenging but out of that at least it um out of training alone it bring out patience it bring out perseverance and and a lot of sacrifice at the same time so at least niliweza kuvumilia at some time, at some point all right kwa kufadna niambie labda before you go ama before you go to any race sema mita 200 maana yake pia wewe unakimbia katika zile mbio za mita 200 na mita 100 before you go to any race either 100 or 200 what do you do a day before uh, 
most of the time me and a gym <laughs> a day before my race cuz najipatanga inatoa the inner strength in me to run to compete the following day alafu lazima ni kule bana ni kule vizuri au siku most of the time me ukula pok <laughs> na kula ngapok the previous night before i go to competition and uh, that's all and uh, just sleep and watch and relax and say tomorrow will be a good day mm-hmm. kwa hiyo lazima ule nyama ngurue hiyo ndio kismat ah. <laughs> <laughs> si kismat as such cuz kuna tai nimekula kuku but me prefer ni kule pok all right asante sana labda eh, kwa mtazamo wangu tu nikiangalia maana nikiuliza maana unajua katika eneo la magharibi mwa Kenya kuna chakula ambacho kinasifika kwa watu watu kutoka eneo hilo labda kwa kwa labda eh what's your favorite meal maana kisha mbiki moja kwa jina la Edinson Rose anaweza kwamba muulize Fernand what's his favorite food uh, i love chapati and ugali ugali kwa upendi ugali kwa ni mluya basi ai kidogo inafaa uombewe but i love ugali cuz it's been my staple food since i was a young kid so nimekuwa nikikula ugali sana unajipata na ikna kula ugali every supper monday to sunday lakini siboeki <laughs> okay so sante sana mako tena kwa ndo wako labda uniambie siku moja kabla ya mashindano unafanya nini asua siku hiyo kabla ya mashindano na labda siku ya mashindano kabla kuye kwenye ndio ama kabla kwenye kuye kwenye uga ule what do you do before the race ah mulala mtakidaganya ndalala i'll just stay the whole day kwa hao no watch to movie ni relax to that's it i don't do much All right. Asante, asante sana kwa hilo nimependa kujua hilo labda nipunguze jumbe za mashabiki pande pili pia kabla ya kusonga mbali nione wanolambika kuhusiana basi na taarifa za Manchester nitawajuza mwisho wa kipindi nije kwake huyu anaitwa eh bwana Andrew Gito nasumbua sana Julius Diego <laughs> Julius Diego anasema great future ahead guys asante sana kwa hilo eh inakuona pia huyu ni kwa jina la Andrew Ogeto anasema sasa baba nitakujibu hapa baadaye baadaye kidogo mimi katika swala hili la diet labda eh, Marco tena niambie what is there a special diet for a sprinter ah uh, yes it is because you can't eat fries all the time na uwezi kula junk food pia kila saa so there's a very specific way that um, a sprinter has to eat and kama ni food akikula like again pia the portion really matter sometimes it depends pia na mwili wa mtu unaweza add weight wengine weight yao inaweza shikilika but at most i can say a balanced diet na fai kuwe na hivi iko na nyama iko na kuku iko hata si kuku iko na greens nyingi <laughs> yeah so all kinds of boring boring food but at the end of it it could bring results Mm-hmm. All right sana sana kwa hilo. E, nije kwake Ferdinand Manyalo niambie labda maana wewe ni mwanafunzi katika chuo kikuu cha Nairobi huko Nairobi na nafahamu kwa kwamba unasomea masuala ya sayansi na kemia na hivi karibu tutakuwa basi ni mwanasayansi wa kitengo kile cha pharmaceutical. Labda niambie labda katika vitengo vyote hivi viwili education and sports. How do you relate the two and how do you join the two and make them balance? It's it's very hard to balance the two especially professional athletics and uh, the course that I'm doing. If I could be doing an online course then it could be easier. But then it's it's so hard to balance uh, between chemistry and 100 meters because you find that if you're an athlete you travel a lot, you travel a lot around the world and most of the time you find yourself moving and moving and moving and competing. And then chemistry lecturers want you to class because my co- the course that I'm doing we do practicals like four times a week and then before you go to a practical you have to go with the report of the previous practical so it's also demanding so what I did is uh, I put that on hold kidogo and then I decided to pursue athletics but then I'll go back to school and finish my degree all right amezungumzia basi masuala ya kubala vitu viwili na najua kama wako tena wewe unachapa kazi katika shirika moja huko nchini labda niambie naye pia how do you balance these two and how do you relate education and sports um at the moment still i'm you know mimi nasoma tu vitabu vitabu mm-hmm. sija uh, kanyaga bado university but nafanya kazi Kenya Posta 
So balancing Kenya job Kenya poster na training pia ni kitu ngumu because the times wana require ukuje job half day and of which itakuwa demanding na itakuchokesha akili and then uko na training either the rest of the afternoon and of which now that's una, una choka more physical so ku balance both sides pia ni a bit expensive in terms of fare cause ukimaliza ukienda job job iko town hapo Kenya hapo GPO then ukimaliza lazima urudi tena all the way back to Kasarani ndo train ndo niende nyumbani so ku balance hiyo kazi ni ngumu sana but you just try and make it happen because you love your job and at the same time also you love your sports right yeah and at the same time sana zingine au nipatia um release so ikifika towards of season na najua niko na race um on a certain month nenda kwa kubwa na uliza release na wana nisaidi anga at least wana nipati even, even if it's five months without coming to work so it's just training going home alright uh, bila shaka nafurahia na kusikia hivyo hivyo by the way labda ndeje katika sasa masuala ya kukimbia maana yake ndio kwamba hivi majuzi tu mwaka huu mapema mwaka huu mwezi machi ulisafiri kuelekea nchini Poland na ukatua medali ya fedha na timu ya taifa ya Kenya katika mbio zile za World Relays kitengo cha 4 by 200 meters na hapo mlifanya kweli by the way labda niambie labda Marco Tieno eh, the experience you've gained from participating in these events abroad what have you learned so far from participating in abroad and what have you achieved there um i've learned to work as a team especially the 4 by 200 meter men the four, the three gentlemen over there so nime learn at least work with good people and um it's been an honor to you know win a medal as one as a Kenyan and it was a dream come true cuz tukiingia camp ya bubble camp tuko tumesema sisi tunataka kujia medal cuz this year was the year that tuko tunataka medal and the previous year that tulienda Yokohama tulikuwa number four and we were so proud with that um achievement and the previous year again we were number seven so at least tukiwa Bahama so when your progress here from number seven to number four to number two it's an achievement and to learn vitu mob sana to learn eh Poland kwa na baridi nyingi sana and at least kuna historia kubwa sana huko kuonyesha vile ma world war venye ma nazis walikuwa na uwa watu so it was a good experience kwenda at least to step in a land where there was a bit of history penye ulisomea mm. all right uh, fernand uh, bwana maka ametaja kuhusiana basi na baridi kule Poland I believe that's one of the culture shocks he, he, he encountered while in Poland and this year. Nawe pia Fadna ndo mesafiri mataifa kadha kadha Nigeria kwa kusini kule Bahamas eh, kule Taiwan na kule Mauritius. For your first time when you were traveling abroad for these uh, games and these uh, championships. Uh, maybe you can just mention to me some of the culture shocks that you encountered in these abroad countries. <laughs> uh, in Nigeria Uh, waneka pilipili mingi kwa chakula my first time i remember when when i, when I landed to nigeria we went to one a certain fast fast food joint and i was brought a, a, a chicken half chicken i think so mimi na njazango i went and beat a very big chunk of meat kusi kwa najua iko na pilipili mingi <laughs> i cried i cried there <laughs> <laughs> Nilikoa nili bana nikaleta maji bado bado ishi. Oh ah sio reka a lot of <laughs> Waleka pili pili mingi in South Africa. In South Africa was a, South Africa was a very great place. I learned how to cook a lot of different meals of which most of the meals wana pika huko is baked. So wana tengeneza and they bake the food. So it was uh, it was a good thing and then ni wasawasafi sana the streets are very are very clean in bahamas bado bahamas was my first ever trip to uh, outside the country so i i was i was still learning i was still in shock so hata si kuona a lot of culture because unajua umepanda ndege mara ya kwanza you are traveling for like 20 hours on air watu wamechoka lakini wewe uchoke huko tu huko tu hapo tu una nice tu <laughs> they are all great experiences <laughs> All right. <laughs> Labda ukiangalia katika katika historia za mbio hizi fupi eh, kule mataifa ya ugaibuni na humu nyumbani. What's the difference between uh, the countries abroad in Africa kusini kule Nigeria, Bahamas, Taiwan, Mauritius? 
What's the difference between our athletes here and the athletes there? Mark. Um, I could say um, in terms of facility wise, they are work ahead. Most of the time, I think if Kamali start to compare equipment that the gym na zetu cause au unajua wanatengeneza huko so the most ni ndazi kwa advanced sisi si tuko bado na the old mm-hmm. tools so si tutatumia okay. bado the old tools <laughs> kutumia na wana advance huko hivyo bale but nikakuja ku realize anyway whatever that they are still using it's still targeting the same muscle that tunaweza tumia kwa hizi gym zetu so athletes huko hivyo they are very disciplined they are very friendly they are very honored same as ours and they are very good in terms of um in terms of work as to say see at this wakona mambo nyingi but there are people who are very strict in terms of their job that they are going to do especially like now when you tunenda um olympics so you will see guys are focused guys are ready you know because you know you are going to run against the best of the best so wezi kuja hapo kama uko mediocre so kila mtu pale hivyo ameka a game yake All right. Eh kuna picha fulani hapa mwelekezo wangu Dennis Njoroge nipe picha fulani hapa ni muonyeshe Mr. Fernando Manyala. Niambie good nani. By Fernando Manyala this is Johan Black. Eh, yeah, my guy, my guy, my guy. Ndio, labda ningependa uniambie uh, what impact does your role model Johan Black have and uh, what effect does he have in your career? How does he inspire you? First of first of all is a very humble guy named uh, Sanapenda God and then looking in the past he has run very fast times in the in the past and I'd like to run the fast times that these guys run before and then he's also a, a guy who works hard I've seen his training videos he's a hard worker and I hope that I'll meet him at the Olympics maybe in the heats or in the semis alafu nimtandike hapo kwa finish line and then we'll talk later All right asante sana kwa hilo <laughs> <laughs> naye Marco Tino naye pia ana role model fulani mzuri sana wa kusifika ambaye ni Usain Bolt and naye pia anaweza kuniambia bwana Marco Tino how does Usain Bolt in, inspire you and what impact has he had so far in your life just as a role model Um you know Usain Bolt is a showman as to say and um, he's a very very hard worker and ni mtu mwenye at least he doesn't akitokea kwa race ni mtu mwenye ata deliver any point ni mse mwenye anaweza attract so much crowd so the thing is um how he behaves in terms of akiwa na crowd vileoji kari akiwa na watu and you know even with his interviews so he's a very very good guy to look up to and yeah so i really like him so much because so yeah ever since ni anze kuingia track and field nimetaka kimbia kae Mm-hmm. By the way it's good to have a role model even in life na mambo kwamba kidogo lazima uwe na mtu ambaye unamtazamia kwamba huyu nikipenda kuwa kama huyu nikipenda kuwa kama nani kwa hiyo kuna mtu mbaya labda huko nje sasa hivi anakutazama sasa hivi anasema kwamba mimi ningependa kuwa kama Fernando Manyara ningependa kuwa kama Marco Tino kwa hiyo ni vizuri sana kuweza kuwa na role model kwenye maisha mtazamaji sasa nije katika swala hili la na kuzingatia basi mataji ambayo mweza kushinda hapa na pale maana kaje kwamba kidogo both of you have your most memorable moments and your worst memorable moments that's a question i normally ask any of my guests who is a sports celebrity in kenya and even abroad so i'll start with the fan of manyalo and the labda what's your most memorable moment and the worst of all when did it happen what happened and how did it happen uh let me start with my worst my worst moment was when i was given a false start in mauritius i've traveled all the way from kenya and then getting to mauritius at the start line i was given a red that was my worst moment nakumbuka when i went back to my hotel room <laughs> i felt like i could just jump jump out of that balcony and just throw myself on a on a car down there but i i gave myself hope and said it's it it happens and then my best moment was when i won the olympic trials in 2016 not this year in 2016 In 2016 it was my first my first year in athletics and I remember Mark was on that race and he was just coming from uh, the African Championships in South Africa and everybody was talking about him Mike Mokamba Brian Gatura and I was a naive guy katoto kadogo hapo getting to the start line <laughs> and then when we just when the and, and what makes it more more more, more memorable is 
there was a lot there were a lot of people in the stadium that day i remember the statistics that i saw was like 40,000 to around 60,000 people on the field and they are watching you and I'm, it's like five months since I started training for in athletic, and then I came in and won that event. It was <laughs> that was the biggest moment. I think that was one of the breakthroughs that I had in my career. All right, uh, uh, ha, sana kwa hilo ni jema kama kuti na kupesi. You are most memorable na ile mbaya zaidi ni gani labda kumpa mbaya juu. Um, ile my most memorable is first when I broke the record in 2017 and made it to the world championship with 200 and then later on nika find nika world rankings kwa najua nika kwa kukimbia 100 so that was a moment that i will never forget because i was looking forward to achieve and represent the country in a world championship level and to go out there meet the great guys out there so it was one of my greatest moment in life and at least when nilienda ku represent atakani litolewa hit I was so happy that I was able first of all to participate and I was healthy at that time and you know at least it was a starting point for for for, for my career as well. Right. And my worst moment so sorry and my worst moment is vile nili um nilitea hamstring yangu 2016 early in the season that was the same olympic year so that was my down as that was my first injury nilipata a second injury sorry my first ilikuwa ankle but ikapona and then later on ika tear hamstring yangu ya 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 left so it was really my down moment because i was looking forward to qualify for the olympics in that year but nilikuwa na ups and downs kidogo all right sana sana kwa hilo nisome jumbe za mashabiki hapa kabla ya kuja katika awamu ya mwisho funga kazi na na kipindi cha ukitsagini mtazamaji ni some kuna huyu anasema Elvis Indiaza Gustavo anasema kwamba hello JG ni JD si JG ni JB Gotea ma visitor wa leo wamesalimika eh, Julius Yego wako wengi tu hapa niangalie pia kwenye mtandao wa WhatsApp unasemaje maana kipia pana wako wengi sana kupitia mtandao ama kupitia kundi lile la Walk with Sagini na kuona Walter Mokaya unasema kwamba yuko na kipindi eh, Fabian Manchester Boy pia unasema kama tazama cha kipindi cha leo Handshake Government unasema kwamba hatupumui humu Sante sana by the way Tinda 001 nasema kwamba e, kipindi kizuri na furaha kuona na wakifika olimpiki basi wafanye kweli wamepata taarifa hiyo na kuona huyu ni Aisha Swab anasema kwamba e, these guys are energetic and they are yet to make history once again in the world scene come next month kaka Charles pia anasema kwamba winning all the way from home to the world Kenya to the world power Asante sana kwa hilo eh, mtazamaji. Labda nije katika awamu ya mwisho hapa, manake nataka nionyeshe picha fulani hapa alafu mniambie. Manake baada ya kushiriki mbio za mita 100 hivi majuzi tu, mliifuzu kuelekea Olympic ya Kopesi. How did you feel Mr. Mr. Mark upon this? This is so supportive by the way. I like this. Yeah. I love this from your wife. Uh, may you say hi say hi to her mkipatana it's so good can you talk about the support she gives you um she gives me a lot of support and a lot of encouragement especially during my down moments and we both to meet her from far nili meet end of 2015 coming 2016 so we've been there for each other for the past 7 five years so and um she's been there she's been a supportive wife and in terms of also financially in terms of you know spiritually as well because that's the most important part so i i don't know how much words can express how much support that she's been there for me even the good moments even the down moment hata kama tuna pesa ama kama tuko nayo she's always been there for me all right asante sana kwa hilo Naye pia Fernand Omanyala pia naye aachi nyuma by the way yuko tu sawa kabisa yeye na hapa. Eh. by the way anapiga support nzuri sana. Fernand Omanyala, uh, what kind of support does she give you and how has she influenced your performance on the pitch? She's she's been part of this journey since I started because before I was a celebrity she was there. And she's been so supportive because she's been working and I've not been working so she's been supporting and financing my career and we've been going through a lot together we've gone through ups and downs and i thank god that 
she came into my life and also gave me a gift of a, of a, of my my son uh, yeah she's been 100% supportive kuna zile times zenye unafika anga usiku you have a rest and then you, you need to sleep early but miss na usingizi ananibeba na nirusha kwa kitanda ba niambia tu itabidi umelala <laughs> and, and there are those days that you feel kwa mka asubuhi ana anakuamsha na kumwagia maji anakuambia toka kwa hii nyumba ndio lale uko nje so unajua una option lazima tu ende train so she's been so supportive she's been very right. very supportive all right napenda hii hapa manake you are also supportive in terms of uh, <laughs> yeah, unaelewa eh in terms of yeah. that what, what you are seeing it's it's so supportive by the way asante sana kwa hilo fana na manyala yeah. familia yake hapo mtazamaji haraka upesi kabla kufungasha virago hapa ni some jumbe za mashabiki manake wanaingia ingia tu wengi sasa hivi wa kuchelewa na kuona Timo Mido anasema show inaisha ikiwa ice cream ya maziwa umechelewa Timo Mido <laughs> <laughs> na kuona Boniface Kagai anasema gotea hao mabisi sana wamesalimika eh bado nasema kwamba nasema kwamba nawatakia heri njema wana riadha wetu asante sana kwa hilo maybe your last words bwana fana na manyala uh, what i can you, tell uh, what do you, what do you, my last what words uh, what, what do you promise Kenyans come next month in the in Tokyo uh, the, it will be a good show kama mtu ana tv enda nunue asisikie tu kwa wasee na, na kwa gazeti and then i like to ask them to pray for me let the prayers uh, go ahead of us all okay. asante sana mako tieno your last words um i will say that um we all be supportive as a kenyan and um i'm putting god first and he's already gone ahead so i'll take each and every race at a time and hopefully to reach at the finals and to make first of all uh, to make uh, my Kenya, to make my country proud and all my fans at least wako hapo hivyo for love and support all right mimi ni seme asante sana fernand na mako tieno i wish you all the best come next month in tokyo japan in the olympics kila laheri kwenu na muwe na wakati mwema thank you also very much for making time for us uh, you guys you are amazing you are so hilarious and you are very fantastic i wish you all the best <laughs> nawe pia mtazamaji nasema asante sana kwa kujumuika nasi leo na nikipindi cha Okid Sagini mimi naitwa Jason Sagini askofu mkuu michezo rumenguni kama ilivyo ada michezo ni yetu sport ni sisi kwa yule shabiki ambaye alikuwa na taarifa za Manchester ni kwamba Sancho wametoa ofa ya pauni milioni 85 Manchester kuelekea bidhi hii Borussia Dortmund kwa hiyo inasubiri tuweza kukubaliwa na basi itakuwa basi ni shwari kwamba ni rasmi atakuwa anajiunga hivi karibuni Jadon Sancho kuelekea Manchester United labda eh kunaona mbali ulizia kwamba labda Marco Tieno which team do you support um <laughs> nilecha kusupport football kitambo but I'm a fan of Manchester <laughs> all right now we Ferdinand I'm not a fan of football. <laughs> hey, all right. Uh, but but I think <laughs> I I think Arsenal wakicheza na kuanga tu hapo nao. <laughs> ah, Sadaka. Asante sana. Kono siku mwema. Salimia kila mtu popote pale mlipo. Asante. All right. Ukwenda siku nyema mtazamaji mimi naitwa Jason Sagini, askofu mkuu wa michezo ulimwenguni. Kwaheri kono siku. Mwema.